Hello and welcome to Value Chain News. I am Naomi Oleribe. First, the headlines. Federal government stakeholders in testifying efforts to address power challenges, NERC. MPA moves to eliminate systemic corruption at ports. River State Government mauls demolition chances around petroleum product tank farms. And now, the news in detail. <music> Sanusi Garba, Chairman Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, NERC, says the federal government and stakeholders in the power industry are intensifying efforts to address the current challenges facing the sector. Garbar said the issue of shortage gas supply to power plants, collapse of the national grid, huge metering gap, and infrastructure deficits were some of the challenges confronting the sector. He said the plan of the government was to ensure that the thermal power plants were working optimally and to ensure that there was stability in the grid. Garba said NEC had approved a special gas pricing for emergency contracting of gas from the Nigerian Gas Marketing Company Limited for the Niger Delta Power Holding Company NDPHC to optimize utilization of its power plants. According to him, it is expected that about 800 megawatts will be generated from the NDPHC plants. The leadership of the Nigerian Ports Authority, NPA, has said that the agency is set to operate in compliance with Standard Operating Procedure, SOP, with a view of eliminating the systemic corruption and other criminal practices at the nation's seaport. Speaking at a meeting with officials of the Maritime Anti-Corruption Network, MACN, led by Soji Apampa, at the authority's head office in Marina, Lagos, managing director of the MPA, Mr. Mohamed Bello Koko, said that the agency's compliance with SOP stipulated in the Nigerian Port Process Manual, a project it funded, will also enhance operational excellence and service delivery at all Nigerian seaports and terminals. <music> The River State Government says it was considering the demolition of makeshift buildings and shanties around premises where petroleum product tank farms were located. This is coming from the wake of the recent fire outbreak in Abonema Wharf in Port Harcourt, an area with heavy concentration of tank farms. Properties and goods worth millions of naira were destroyed following the fire outbreak near a tank farm at Abonema Wharf. Speaking on the development, the River State Commissioner for Energy and Natural Resources, Dr. Peter Midi, said the Abonema Wharf fire outbreak was caused by illegal storage of petroleum products. Midi explained that residents around the area use shanties and makeshift buildings to store petroleum products and other inflammable substances which ignite fire at the slightest mistake. <laughs> in fuel prices by 8 US cents a litre in Zimbabwe following government tax cuts has been welcomed by businesses and motorists who have been feeling the pinch after hike in crude oil prices in the country. The rapid rise in crude oil prices following global recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic and then the switches in supply chains as a result of the Russia-Ukraine conflict saw the retail price in Zimbabwe rise to one 
$1.67 a litre for petrol and $1.68 a litre for diesel. The prices follow a formula that includes all costs, including the fuel duty and maximum markups for oil companies and service stations. But following the intervention by the government, which promised to reduce the tax on each litre, a litre of petrol is now $1.59 why diesel is now $1.60. In a statement on Sunday, the Zimbabwe Energy Regulatory Authority encouraged operators to charge prices lower than the capped price depending on their trading advantages. Oil demand in 2022 is expected to outpace the pre-pandemic levels of 2019, with energy prices likely to remain elevated for some time, Vito's chief executive Russell Hardy said on Monday. Twelve months ago, the worst horrors of COVID appeared to be over as life in many societies began to get back to normal, so oil demand rebounded. With all products apart from jet fuel seeing strong growth, it disclosed in a statement on the group's 2021 results. While we anticipate oil demand falling in the long term, demand is likely to continue to grow for the next decade. Given limited investments in production, we expect a demand gap to widen over the next few years, he said. Vito said its revenue leapt to $279 billion in 2021 from $140 billion in 2020 and it delivered 7.6 million barrels a day of crude oil and products last year compared with 7.1 million barrels a day in 2020. <music> Governor Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, Mr. Godwin Emifele, on Monday said the management of the Apex Bank would soon be meeting with the Nigeria National Petroleum Company Limited, NMPC, and the Ministry of Finance, Budget, and National Planning to work out ways of immediately resolving the fuel scarcity now impacting prices of goods and services. Emifele, who stated this at the 141st Monetary Policy Committee meeting in Abuja, also said that the members of the Policy Committee voted to retain all monetary policy parameters, including the monetary policy rates. According to Emifele, the Russia-Ukraine crisis has dealt a devastating blow on the energy sector, leading to supply shortages across the globe. He said the MPC was particularly worried about the rising crude oil theft in Nigeria, which is worsening the energy crisis and preventing Nigeria from meeting its production quota. Before we end the news, here's a recap of our headlines. Federal government, stakeholders intensifying efforts to address power challenges, NERC. Rivers government, malls demolition chances around petroleum product tank farms. 
MPA moves to eliminate systemic corruption at ports. And that's the news. I am Naomi Oleribe. Good evening.